What's the crusade you're going on? A mission to live your life's purpose and passion. What if this year is the last year of your life? What's your God-sized dream? What do you stand for? Live your best life this year. Now, that's the time. I'm going on a crusade to change people's mindsets every single day. So are you on board? You, yup, I'm back. That's right, everyone, welcome back to the episode here. Today we're talking about, are you in the right line of work? Why are we talking about that? Well, because after last week's episode, I got inundated with all of your comments like, TD, thanks for sharing that episode. It was called Six Ways to Get Your Mind Right When Your Mind Ain't Right. And you are like, hey, you hit on some points there. And one of the points that I hit on was all about doing work that matters. And many of you shared your hearts and souls. So I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for sharing your heart and soul about what you do and why you do it. Because as I emphasized, the purpose of that show was not to say, I quit. I'm going to find a new job. It was simply to remind you of, are you doing work that matters? So when I say, are you in the right line of work? I want to challenge you and coach you because many of you also stated, I liked how you were coaching in the episode. And at the heart of hearts, that's what I love to do. So guess what's coming in today's episode of the Todd Can Impact Show? Yup, coaching and more coaching. And I'm going to talk not only are you in the right line of work, I got three three things I want to challenge you with. I also want to talk a little bit about burnout and how do we prevent that? Because the month of April here, I'm on the road a lot doing keynote talks and every company that I'm working with in all different industries are all facing employees and teammates who are burnt out. And if you're like, TD, that's me, that's me. Don't worry, I'm gonna serve and coach you today in that exact topic as well. And I'm gonna challenge you with some things as well. So let's get to it. We've got, are you in the right line of work? I've got three different points. Point number one, write it down in your notes, your journal, or just listen to it as you're huffing and puffing out there as you pound the pavement. Number one, When you think about are you in the right line of work, what I'd like for you to do is first off, just as if I'm coaching in my God Size Dreams coaching program or in my mastermind is, identify your top God-given gifts and make sure that you're maximizing those gifts. So identify those gifts. What are they? What are your top God-given gifts? Now, when you think about that, you probably have two or three that pop to the top. Like, whatever that is, what are the gifts that you have? Now, and as I wrote down some notes for today's episode, I would like to have a little bit of an outline and then just talk with you here in the episodes, is some examples may be you're positive, or you're an encourager, or you're creative, or you're a leader, or you're, you're, you're humorous, you're funny, or your gift is patience, or your gift is you are a nurturer and you love to nurture people. Whatever your gifts are, write them down because what's important as you identify your gifts is you've got to make sure that you're saying yes to the roles within your job that allow you to exploit your gifts. Because if you're in a role in your J-O-B that you're not utilizing your gifts, then you're not going to tap into your core of who you truly are. So for me, When I was thinking about this, because this is what I coach on a on a daily basis with those whom I coach, not only here on the podcast, but formally is energy. I think that's a gift that I have is is I certainly manifest that, but it is a gift. Positivity. Uh, I'm an optimist. So making sure that I'm tapping into that gift leader, caring and spirit. I wrote down five things for me that caring, I truly care about anyone who is listening to this right now from all corners of the planet, as we have folks from over 50 different countries listening into the Todd Can Impact show, and I love hearing from you. And spirit, not just from a faith standpoint, but spiritually, how are you doing right now? From, from my standpoint, I know that if I'm I'm spending and investing time in my own spirit, then I can foster that. Now, when I'm not in line with my energy or my positivity or leadership of those whom I lead and my my spirit, then I'm not really happy. 
and we all want to be happy, right? So point number one is this. When you identify your gifts, make sure you're saying yes to the roles within your job that allow you to really exploit those gifts. I know when I'm coaching and I'm leading, I'm at my best. So when I'm coaching up on stage, when I'm coaching here on the podcast or I'm in one of my coaching programs and I'm working with someone, I'm using my God-given talents. I want to make sure that you are using your God-given talents and gifts, your skill sets that you've either been blessed with or have worked hard for. And if not, then your job is to change that. Number two, when it comes to are you in the right line of work or the right role within your work, and I shared on it last week, but I want to go a little bit deeper because I struck a chord with some of you. Are you doing work that matters? So let me ask you the question. Have you ever been in a job that just doesn't matter? Like, you're like, this doesn't matter. I, I was thinking about the question as I pose it to you. When I was in college, I was, a, I was a bouncer for a day. I had a job for a day. And I'm like, this just doesn't matter. There was a bunch of drunk people. And I'm like, all right, now I got to go kick out. a. That's a, that's a fact that none of you probably knew that I was a bouncer for a day. I'm like, this just doesn't fit my skill set. You're like, yeah, but it was, it, was, it was a job in college. Okay, I, I was also a lifeguard. That mattered because if someone was drowning, I actually liked when we had to actually blow three whistles and jump in the Atlantic Ocean on the on the Jersey Shore, Brick Beach, number one, and go and save lives. That job mattered. Even though I was only 20, 21 years old, it mattered. Being a bouncer, for me, didn't matter. Now, if that's your skill set, that's your gift, fantastic. For me, that didn't matter. Y'all are laughing like, I can't picture TD as a bouncer. Yeah, me either. But uh, y'all, y'all have probably had jobs too that you haven't uh, always liked. The bottom line is whatever your skill sets, whatever your gifts, if they're not challenging you and the end result of your job doesn't matter to the level that you want based on your purpose, then you got to change that. You know, or maybe you've been in a role within your job that just hasn't fit you and you've lost some of your luster for the job. Maybe it's like, man, I don't really like my job. Well, maybe you need to speak with your 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 superior, your boss, your leader and say, hey, can I take on a new role? Can I actually become the performance director and grow camps uh, within the gym? Or you're an accountant and you want to someday become a partner uh, at your law firm or your accounting firm. What do you need to do because you love the idea of being an entrepreneur and maybe you don't want to go start your own thing, or maybe you do whatever. The bottom line is this, is when you identify those gifts and then you say, I'm in line with that, are you doing work that matters? How do you do that? You find a passion that you love doing it. When you marry your gifts, those gifts are divine, and you marry those those passions with your purpose, now all of a sudden that allows you to create impact where you feel like, hey, my work matters the most. So the question begs, what work matters most to you? When do you feel most fulfilled these days? Because I'm challenging you. I challenge you all year here in 2022. I'm going on a crusade to challenge you to live a life we're telling a story about, to tap into your deepest desires, passions, dreams, and purposes to make sure that you are doing work that matters. Because when you do work that matters, you feel fulfilled. You feel like you're giving back and you're making a difference because this world today needs more difference makers. And that is you. And that's why you're listening today. So the question is, when do you feel most complete? When do you feel most fulfilled? Now, if you're like, hey, most of the time I feel that great. But what if you don't? Have you ever been completely exhausted and exhilarated at the same time? Yes, I have too. Matter of fact, there's many days today when I'm like, after podcasting, um, I might feel exhausted tonight after a long day and I'm exhilarated. I'm like, I was doing God's work today because my passions, my skill sets, my gifts all aligned and it made a difference to millions of people, hopefully, right? What is that? What is that for you when you have that that commonality between exhaustion and exhilaration, and that's when you know you're doing your best work? When I think back and reflect, and you think back and reflect, when were you doing your best work? WLWB, when life works best, what were you doing? When life was working best, what were you doing? And you must replicate that. 
When I reflect on that, just a few years back, many of you have, have seen uh, the reality show that I did called Strong. I believe that is a time of my life, man, when I was filming strong, that was the feeling that I got, that I was doing my best work. I was training and coaching. I had a platform where I could motivate and inspire millions of people. Now, the podcast hopefully serves as that platform as well, but when we reflect back on what what work mattered most, that was in a time of my life. I ask you the same question. In the last two to three years or the last five years, when were you most fulfilled and how do you replicate that today? Because when I say, are you in the right line of work? Once again, it might mean you just need to tweak the work that you're doing to make sure that it makes the biggest impact. And the third aspect that I share today on are you in the right line of work in three ways, the third way is a question I have for you. Are you running to something or from something? Let me repeat that and think about it right now as you're walking, jogging, running. Maybe you just picked up the pace because I said, are you running to something or are you running from something? Because it's very important today when you're looking for the juice and when you think about are you in the right line of work that you are running to something and not from something. Now, I've led many retreats in my lifetime, 19 different mentorships, 24 mastermind retreats, and hundreds of different keynotes and different events that I've either hosted or been a part of. Now, I've asked that question for a long time with those who I coach, and today I ask you. Why? Because it's an important question when you think about that. What are you running towards? What are you going towards in your, in your life? Maybe you're running towards a degree right now. Maybe you're running towards a certification. Maybe there's a certain level within your career. There's even a certain financial goal that you have. You're running toward that, a certain pay grade, a certain rank in the military or a level within your job. You're running toward that. Maybe you're running toward starting a business or perhaps you want to start uh, your own business and uh, you want to get to a certain level within that business. Maybe you want to sell your business. Maybe you want to bring a partner into your business. Maybe you want to write a book or you want to start a podcast. These are things, Are these are examples that you're running toward something. Maybe you want to get married personally. Maybe you want to get married or you want to become a parent or you're running towards becoming an empty nester. The fact of in five years, I'm going to be an empty nester, that's going to be another episode. I'm going to be full of tears. Let's not even go there before I start crying. My gosh, these kids are growing up way too fast, so I digress. But what stinks about when you're focused on something that you're running from? If you're running from something, there's a few reasons why we don't want to be in this state of mind. And I want to change the state to change your state today. I want to change your state to change your state today. Because if you're running from something instead of towards something, Here's what happens. When you're running from something, the something that you're running from, it always seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And maybe that's, uh, 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 it becomes a monster. It becomes something that starts to eat you up and provide more angst, anxiety, depression, fear, all of these things. Also, when you're running from something, you tend to look backwards more often. And that is not a good thing when you're constantly looking in the rearview mirror, when you're looking backwards. There's this story, y'all have probably heard it before, Roger Bannister, 1954, he broke the four minute mile and uh, it had not been broken to that point after he broke it. Uh, there was dozens of people within a few years who once that once that record was broken, people started breaking it right and left. But the reason why I share that is because there was another guy uh, named John Landy, I believe his name was John Landy and Landy. There's actually a statue of Landy looking backwards at Bannister, because when he looked back, when Landy looked back, guess who came flying by? Bannister. Because when you spend more of your time looking back, you're getting passed up. So what I want you to do is 
I want to make sure that you're not spending your life looking back at past decisions, things that have happened to you, and I want to make sure that you spend more of your time looking forward because looking backward, running from something prevents you from looking forward. So if you're constantly looking back, NG, not good. So if that's you and you, you're living right now running from something, here's what I want you to do. I want you to ceremonialize the end of it. That's not, not that today like you're thinking about it. We're going to ceremonialize the end of looking back at whatever's holding you back. Whatever level that is, big or small, whether it was as a kid, whether something happened in high school, college, later on, stop hold, letting it hold you back. And it's time to release those chains. Pick a date that it's going to be over and celebrate it being over because you're ending it today. And you can look at the episode number and say, TD, thank you. I needed to hear that. The ceremonializing of the end of what's holding me down and back because it's bogging me down. There's no more regret. There's no more resentment. There's no more disappointment. There's no more anxiety or whatever's eating you up on the inside because the angst and anxiety, depression that's holding you back is not worth it. We must release it today. No more looking back, wishing you could take it back. You can't. Nope, it's over today. We, we set that date in stone and now it's time to get your eyes fixed forward and start hitting that four minute mile, whatever that means to you, to start running and start finding something that fires you up, that marries your passion and your purpose because after all, you got to do work that matters. <laughs> I'm a little fired up, my friends. So, man, oh man. So let's 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 just change the let's change the tone here for a second. You're fired up. You got these three three ways now. Are you in the right line of work? And I want to just spend time here on the second part of the show talking about something that could eat you up called burnout. Burnout. Because if you're burnt out, then you can't do these things or you're not as likely to do the three things I just shared with. So I've got five ways. I'm going to rapid fire through these five ways that perhaps you're feeling a little burnt out. Anyone feeling that? Raise your hand as you're running. Oh, some of you just raised both hands. I saw you. I actually saw you raise both hands as you're running right now. And if you're driving, please don't release the wheel with two hands in the air. Uh, that would not be good. And you're like, what happened, officer? Well, TD told me to raise both my hands up and I lost control of the car. Here's how you prevent burnout. Number one, I'm going to challenge you. Is it time to take a sabbatical? Is it time to take a sabbatical? Now, I'm not telling you today that I'm taking a sabbatical, so stop even thinking that. No, 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 not yet, not yet. But maybe you've been doing this for 10 years, 15 years, 20 plus years or more. Maybe you've got to take a short sabbatical because you're so burnt out that it's time for you to catch your breath and take a month off, three months off or six months off. I don't know. It depends on where you're at in your walk of life and your journey. But I know my wife, Melanie, she had a sabbatical as a professor. She's a professor at a community college here in San Diego. And many years ago, she had a sabbatical and it was really, really good for her career. Now, as a coach and a business owner and a gym owner, um, I have never had a sabbatical where I've taken that amount of time off. And I start with it because at some point over the next couple of years, I'm going to go to the mountains. I'm going to take a sabbatical. I'm just going to do some podcasts because this ain't even work. This is fun stuff. But I challenge you to think about, is it time for a short sabbatical, a long sabbatical? Because if you're burnt out, it might be. The second aspect is this. If you're feeling burnt out, Please do not make any big decisions when you're in complete overwhelm or burnout mode. Because what happens is when you're burnt out, you make decisions that are forever, forever impactful. You got to really lean on your mentors, your counselors, your coaches, your confidants, and consult with them if you're burnt out. Because if you don't have the energy, you can't sustain the clarity of thought and the brain juice that's necessary to make the decisions to help you get out of burnout. So I want to help you rejuvenate yourself to think clear. So maybe that's the sabbatical number one. Don't make any big decisions when you're complete overwhelm. And number three, now this is everybody. Tweak your schedule. 
right now. Tweak your schedule. Several years ago, I had a confidant that I work with that challenged me to audit my days, to audit my time from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, every single thing that I do do for three days and a weekend. So three days and a weekend, because you find out a lot about where you're wasting time, wasting energy, doing things that are sucking your energy dry. So as you audit your energy, by twi- it's going to uh, basically re- reveal to you that you might need to tweak your schedule. And I, again, I encourage you to listen to the previous episode, episode on how to get your mind right when your mind ain't right, because it's going to help you really get the energy back and get your mind where it needs to be to do that. So where in your schedule can you potentially adapt it so that you're not always feeling burnt out? Which leads me to my fourth aspect that's not a sabbatical, but get more mellow yellow time in your schedule. Thank you, Wayne Cotton, who I've had on the show multiple times. Uh, And I recently heard uh, Robin Sharma talk about this. One week off every two months. Like, one week off every two months? That sounds really good. Not sure where you're at again in your journey, but maybe you need a weekend off every week. (laughs) Like, maybe you're working six or seven days a week because of all of the demands that are on you. So that when you get a day off every now and then, you could think, you could play, you could write, you could laugh, you could enjoy life because... Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Enjoying life? So think about how can you tweak your schedule and in that have a day off a week. Sunday, maybe it's two days off a week, the weekend off. But I really like the idea of getting more mellow yellow time because when you look at Wayne Cotton's color-coded calendar system and we talk about mellow yellow time and blue sky time, that's dreaming time, getting in the mountains and, and doing some strategic time, is Mellow yellow time and blue sky time lead to more green machine time, and that's making money time. So when you look at nobrowndays.com, nobrowndays.com, that's Wayne's system there. When you think about that, we all need more mellow yellow and blue sky time. And I want to challenge you and encourage you to look at your schedule and tweak your schedule to say, how can I really rejuvenate my own energy? Because the fifth aspect to prevent burnout or overcome burnout, and this is a reminder, but it's giving you permission to number five, take care of you. Exercise. Two, see a doctor. And and I use two different kind types of doctors, the allopathic doctor and a naturopathic doctor. Allopathy is your tra- traditional MD that you're going to get your blood work drawn up. And then my naturopathic doctor, who I'm going to see two to three times a year and get my blood work and get my s- saliva take and find out where my hormones are at and everything else. Take care of you. Recovery work. Where can you amp up your recovery? Massage one to two times a month stretch therapist, maybe once a week, doing some more yoga classes and meditation and breath work and using Norma Tech boots. I've had you know different episodes on recovery. I might need to do a standalone just on recovery, but recovery gives you the energy so you don't get burnt out. And the, and the fifth uh, or the fourth aspect of take care of you is sleep and supplementation. Now, on the previous episode, again, I talked about nighttime routine and journaling and making sure you do that. But the three, two, one routine, the three, two, one routine that I've, I've talked about, let me just share that three hours before you go to bed, you eat dinner two hours before you go to bed, you shut down work and one hour before you go to sleep. It's all about you, baby. It's all about you taking care of yourself. And whether that means to you, you go in infrared infrared sauna. If you have one at the house or you don't take a hot bath, stretch, breathe, pray, get quiet time, read a great book. And there's a lot of great books out there or just simply relax. 
But the sleep, if you're going to bed and you just got done working and you were on the computer and you're watching the news and everything that's happened over in the Ukraine, I can promise you, your sleep isn't going to be the quality of sleep that you need to take care of you. So when you look at preventing burnout, it goes hand in hand with everything I just said on the three different aspects and three different ways of what you can do to make sure you're in the right line of work. Because the last I checked, Whatever line of work that you're in, while the grass often seems greener on the other side, it often is not greener on the other side. You think that it is because you're tired and burnt out because you have all these roles. Maybe it's the time to eliminate some of the roles and put yourself in the roles that line up with the gifts that you have and reassuring yourself that you're doing work that matters. So my friends, that is today's episode when it talks about, we talk about Are you in the right line of work? I challenge you and promise you to think about those three aspects and to make sure that you're taking care of yourself so that you don't get burnt out. Whatever it takes, I need, we need, and most importantly, you need you operating as your best self. So until next time, remember, train hard, eat right, and always live inspired. Peace and God bless. 